Oh, wow. How, what is the temperature right now? About minus 30. Okay, wow. <laughs> That's really cold. I'm from, uh, I'm originally from Texas in the United States, south in the United States, so I'm used to uh, much warmer temperature. I have never been in negative 30 degree weather. <laughs> wow, well, I hope you stay warm this winter. <laughs> Good, it's nice to meet you. Let's also, let's also say hi to Fabio. Hi, Fabio. Yoo-hoo. <laughs> hi, Fabio. You might be loading still. I'll come back to you, Fabio. Uh, I see your microphone is is on in the Hangout, but maybe you had a have a problem with your computer microphone. But I'll come back. Uh, Natalie, your picture is totally Hi. changed. Oh, there we Do go. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Fabio. Hi. Um, is this your first class with me? I have a problem with the microphone. Okay, but I can hear you now. Um, Fabio, are, have we had a class together before? Or is this your first class with me? Fabio? Fabio. Fabio, are you new to, to Verbling or my classes? Is this your first class? Okay, um, I'll come back to Fabio. Looks like he might have some a microphone problem. Um, yeah, I'll come back to you. Uh, Natalie, your picture is totally changed now. Now you're back into your your um, your picture that we saw for part of the time last class. Now you have that that London thing. Oh, she's gone. <laughs> I'm scary. Okay, hi Oscar. Hi teacher, how are you? In uh, your class and at the Verbling. Okay, great. Welcome to my class and welcome to Verbling. And uh, Fabio, where are you from? Yoo-hoo! <laughs> okay, Fabio, uh, we'll come back to you. I think maybe there's a microphone problem. Okay, uh, saying hi to Oscar. Hi, Oscar. Hey, hi, teacher. How are you? Doing again? well? <laughs> yeah, hi again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine, friends. Great. Nice to see you. I'm from Italy. Nice to see you, too. Uh, little town near Milano. Okay, Fabio from Italy. Okay, great. Nice to have you in class. All right, uh, let's say hi to Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Welcome back. Yoo-hoo, Sarah. Sorry, you turned your microphone on, but I can't hear you. Maybe it's a bad technology day today. Hello. There we go. Can you there we hear go. me? Yes, I can hear you now. Welcome back. Okay, good. Thank you. And we also have Victor. Hi, Victor. Hello, Andrea. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank you. Great, great. Nice to see you. Nice and, to see you as well. Uh -huh. And we have Abdul Aziz. Hi, Abdul Aziz. Hi, Christian. How are you doing today? I'm go go good. Great. Nice to see you. Nice and, to see you. Uh -huh. Let's also say hi to Gunai. Hi, Gunai. Hi. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Great. Nice to see you. And also returning is Ali. Hi, Ali. Welcome back. Hi, Angela. All right, guys, welcome to class. Um, we will read a poem together today, and you have three things that will happen. One thing is I will read the poem, and you can listen. Um, I'm from the United States, so today we will use a U.S. accent when I work with you on pronunciation. So if you're trying to sound like someone from America, from the United States, this is a good class for you. 
Um, just be aware that uh, there are other pronunciations, like there's UK pronunciation. They have some different vowels and consonants. But uh, today will be US pronunciation. We'll read a poem together. You will listen to me read it. And then each one of you will read part of the poem. So you will get um, some help with your pronunciation. I'll help each of you individually. And as we go, I also will tell you um, I'll tell you about new words in the poem. I'll tell you just in general what is happening in the poem. The poem has a is a story today. This poem we started yesterday. We didn't finish it. It's a funny version of a story called The Emperor's New Clothes. Maybe you have heard about it. But it's a poem and it's uh, it has a little bit different ending than the original The Emperor's New Clothes. So, but it's very fun, and it's um, by a poet I really like, and he has some really um, interesting ways that he tells stories. So, um, because this is a big class, I may be just, I, I'll explain um, the, the idea of the poem, like what exactly is happening in it as we go. But if you have any questions about uh, any individual words, you can ask me as well. Um, here comes the link for it, if you want to look at it on your own computer. Um, yes, here we go. We will look at that. And let's also get my screen going. Screen share should work better. I think Google fixed it. It was broken earlier. So we will not start at the very, very beginning. But in the beginning of the poem, it just talks about how there is a king. And he really likes expensive clothes. He wears very, very fancy very luxurious clothing, very uh, spends a lot of money on clothes. He cares a lot about his clothes. Clothes are very important to him. And he's kind of crazy. He's crazy because when his clothes get dirty, he has his servants, the people helping him, he, he um, has them killed. He's, that's, that's how crazy he is. So when, whenever his clothes have any kind of dirt or food on them, the servant that gave him the clothes, he has them sent to death. So uh, now, in this poem, we will start where uh, we have a group of people that want to make a plan to kill the king because he's so crazy and he's killing other people just because his clothes got dirty. So we'll start with, and thus the secret plans were laid. And we will start today, let's start with Gunai starting in yeah. towards the middle. So I'll start, I'll read um, down to and never will do anymore here. Um, I'll read first and then you will read after me. And okay. thus the secret plans were laid and all arrangements quickly made. Twas winter time with lots of snow and every day the king would go to ski a bit before he dined in ski suits specially designed but even on these trips he'd stop to go into the tailor's shop. Oh, Majesty, cried Mr. Ho, I cannot wait to let you know that I've contrived at last to get from secret weavers in Tibet a cloth so magical and fine, so unbelievably divine. You've never seen it like this before and never will do any more. Okay. Go ahead. Um, uh, okay. And first the secret plans were led and all arrangements quickly made. It was uh, winter time uh, with lots of snow and every day the king would go to ski a bit before he died in ski suit specially designed. Uh, but even on these trips he'd stop to go to go into the tailor's shop. Oh, Majesty, cried Mr. Ho, I cannot wait to let you know uh, that I've contrived at last to get from secret weavers in Tibet. A cloth so magical and fine, uh, so unbelievably divine. Uh, you've never seen it's like before and never will do any more. Okay, thank you. So in this part of the poem, the, there are some men that had a meeting and they decided we will make a plan. It will be secret. No one will know about the plan. 
they want to make a plan to kill the king, and so they have the king. The king is going to ski. He's going to um, go in the place with lots of snow and hills, and he will go down the hills on skis as a winter sport. He likes to ski a lot. Before he goes skiing, he goes to the tailor. The tailor is the person who sells clothes to you, and the tailor says, there is some very, very, very expensive, very valuable cloth here, and uh, it's very rare. It's only from Tibet, and it's so amazing. You will, you have never seen anything like it before. So he's saying something about some new cloth that he has for the king. So let's go. Um, good night. Let's go up to the top, and let's say the word laid. Laid. Mm -hmm. Good. Say plans were laid. Plans were laid. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Say winter. Now, the way you read it was winter, but uh, in the first syllable, make your eye shorter. Winter. Winter. Yeah. Say winter time. Winter time. Mm -hmm. Good. Same idea with the word bit. So not beat, but bit. Ah, uh, bit. Mm -hmm. Say ski a bit. Uh, to ski a bit. Uh huh. Good. And so we have ski and then bit. Another I sound dined. Too. We have three different I sounds in this line. Say, uh -huh. to, to ski a bit before he dined. Uh, to ski a bit before <laughs> to ski a bit before he dined. Yeah, excellent. Ski suits. Ski suits. 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 Uh-huh. Ski suits. Ski suits. suits. Mm -hmm. ski what, suits. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Words that, uh, clothes that you wear when you go skiing, a ski suit, very, very thick pants and a very warm jacket because it's super mm -hmm. cold when you go skiing. On the word cannot, for two things, make sure can is strong. And also, yeah. when you have the end, it ends with a T, but when we have a word that ends in a T, we make the T very, very soft. Cannot. Cannot. Mm -hmm. Let's put it with the word after it. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. Mm -hmm. Good. Magical. 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 Mm -hmm. Say magical and fine. Magical and fine. Mm -hmm. Same thing with your I sound here. Divine. Divine. Mm -hmm. Say unbelievably divine. Unbelievably divine. Mm -hmm. Good. And it. It. This. This. It like this. It like this. Mm -hmm. You've never seen it like this before. Uh, you've never seen it like this before. Yes. Good. So for you, just be careful with <clears throat> with your short I sounds with I. That I fell sound. Um, you're, there's not. I don't really have any rules for you for like when is it if when is it not if based on spelling, um, but just be careful with that. Um, and uh, you'll hear that also. It's it's not just you. It's with other languages as well. Some languages don't really have the that if vowel sound, but you can you can hear the difference and you can do it. So that's good. That's the most important thing. Okay, good. So the this tailor is about to sell him some very expensive clothes so he can go skiing and be warm when he goes uh, and does this. All right, great. Uh, let's go next to Natalie. And you'll do the next section. Here we go. Okay. The king yelled out, I'll buy the lot. I'll purchase every yard you've got. The tailor smiled and bowed his head. Oh, honored sire, he softly said, this marvelous magic cloth has got amazing ways to keep you hot, and even when it's icy cold, you still feel warm as molten gold. However hard the north wind blows, you still won't need your underclothes. The king said, if it's all that warm, I will have a skiing uniform. I want ski trousers and a jacket. I don't care if it costs a packet. Okay. The king yelled out, I'll buy, I'll, I'll buy the lot. I'll purchase 
everything yet you got. The tailor smiled and walled, walled his head. Uh, on a sir, he softly said, This marvelous magic cloth has got amazing ways to keep you hot. And even when it's ice cold, it's ice cool, you still feel warm as molten, molten gold. However hard the north wind blows, blows, you still won't need your underclothes. The king said, "It if is all the this is it all that warm, I will have a skin as a skin." In uniform, I want a skin trouser and jacket. I don't care if it costs a packet. Okay, good. So the king says, "I want to buy all of it. Give me, make me clothes with this fabric. I don't care if it's expensive." And the tailor says, "Okay, you can have it. This cloth, these clothes are very, very warm. You'll be super warm when you go skiing. These are fantastic clothes for skiing." And the king says, yes, I want these clothes. I will buy all of them. I don't care how much it costs. If it's expensive, I will buy it. It's okay. So um, going to the top line, Natalie, we have the here. Um, yesterday with um, Oscar, I think you asked that question about uh, how we pronounce this word. Sometimes we pronounce it the. Sometimes we pronounce it the. Mm -hmm. um, here, I would say the. Usually when we have the, it's because it's before a word that starts with a consonant. So mm -hmm. the lot. Try, say the lot. The lot. Uh-huh, yeah. So if you have a word that's, the, if the word after the word the is um, starting with a vowel, we might say the. But here, because lot starts with a consonant, we'll say the. Okay. But um, that's, this is, that's, a, really, um, that's a, a really small detail. If you say the for everything, it's fine. Not a big deal. Okay. Yep, yep. Let's say purchase. Per purchase. Uh huh. Say the, the just say the second syllable of the word chess. Chess. Yeah. Now by itself, this word is the word chase, but here it's yeah. purchase. Yeah. Purchase. Uh huh. Yeah. Good. Your ch is uh, sounding much better too. Purchase. Uh huh. Purchase. Yep. Let's say smiled. Smiled. Mm -hmm. And also, same thing where you have an S followed by another consonant. Be careful that you, you make sure you have the S, the S sound first. Um, still. Still. Uh huh. And ski. Ski. Uh huh. Good, good. Say the tailor smiled. The tailor smiled. Mm -hmm, good. Bowed. Bowed. Mm -hmm. He puts his head down, just very polite when you bow your head to someone. Um, in Asian cultures, some Asian cultures, you, people will bow to each other. You just lean forward, your head goes down a little bit, and you come back up. It's very polite. Um, underneath that we have the word sire. Sire. Mm -hmm. Now, without the E, S-I-R, that's sir. But here he's calling him sire, which means like your majesty. Uh, it's it's something very polite that you say to a king or a prince, someone who is um, royal. Say, um, oh honored sire. Oh honored sire. Mm -hmm. Good. So he said, this cloth is, is amazing. It will keep you very warm, even if it's icy cold. Say that, icy cold. Icy cold. Mm -hmm, good. And even when it's icy cold. And even when it's icy cold. Mm -hmm. Molten. Molten. Mm -hmm. Melted. If you take gold, you make it very, very hot. It's so hot it turns into liquid. That's, that's molten. In a volcano, lava in a volcano is also molten. Something that is solid that gets... In so incredibly hot that it melts, it turns into liquid. Say um, molten gold. Molten gold. Uh huh, very good. And one more, underclothes. Underclothes. Yeah, so clothes here is, the, you have a th here, but we don't say clothes, but just clothes. You did that correctly, I'm just pointing that out for the class, though. So. Okay. Underclothes. Okay, very good. 
Okay, so they says, I have some very nice clothes for you. And the I king got, says, I want to I buy them. I have a question. Uh, yes. In the, in the line, this um, warm, is, I, I am saying good because I am not sure about that word. When I say the... Um, warm? Uh, yeah, I feel warm. Warm is warm? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're good. Is, is, warm. Is good? Uh -huh. okay. Yes. Yeah, it's fine. It's at, uh, that as I, I wasn't sure about if I say that correctly or not. Yeah, no, that's that's correct. Warm. Okay, okay uh -huh. thank you. <laughs> okay, good. Oscar is next. Yes. Down to so the king is wants to buy all of these clothes. Produce the cloth. I want to see this marvelous cloth you're selling me. The tailor, feigning great surprise, said, Sire, it's here before your eyes. The king said, Where? Just tell me where. It's in my hands, O king, right here. The king yelled, tearing at his hair. Don't be an ass, there's nothing there. The tailor cried, Hold on, I pray. There's something I forgot to say. The cloth's invisible to fools and nincompoops and other ghouls. For brainless men who are around the twist, the cloth does simply not exist. But seeing how you're wise and bright, I'm sure it glistens in your sight. But uh, this the clothes. I want to see it. This marvelous clothes you're selling me. The tailor, feeling great surprise, said, Sire, I here before your eyes. The the king said, where? Just tell me where. It's in my hands. I came right here. The king yelled, tearing at his hair. Don't, don't, don't be an ass. There is nothing there. The tailor cried, hold on, I pray. There's something I forgot to say. The clothes invisible to false. And Nincombs and other goals for Venice men were all on the twist. The clothes that simple not exist. But seeing how you are wise and bright, I'm sure a glimpsing in your side. Okay, thanks Oscar. Says. So the king the the king says, I want to see this cloth. Please show me the cloth. The tailor says, uh, what cloth? It's right here. The tailor is tricking the king. The tailor has no cloth, and he tells the king, "You can't. Uh, if you can't see it, that means you are stupid. So this cloth is invisible. You cannot see it if you are stupid, if you are a fool, if you're a nincompoop. <laughs> and he says, oh, but you're the king. You're very smart, so I'm sure you can see it, but the, it's a trick. There's no cloth at all. Okay, uh, and I'll, I'll do more words, more vocabulary words as we work on pronunciation. Um, the first word, Oscar, let's say produce. Produce. Mm -hmm. So produce, the second syllable will be strong. Can you do second syllable a little stronger? Produce. Produce. Mm -hmm. Yes, produce the cloth. Show me the cloth. I want to see it. Say cloth. Cloth. Uh-huh. Taylor. Taylor. Uh huh. Feigning. Feigning. Uh huh. If you feign surprise, that means you act surprised. You pretend to be surprised. Like, oh, I didn't know that. But you really do know what's going on. He's just acting. Um, let's also say your. Your. Uh huh. Say before your eyes. Before your eyes. Mm -hmm. it, what are you talking about? The cloth is right here. You should see it. It's. I'm holding it in my hands. Uh, also, oh, Oscar, with the word it's, give me a little bit more T. It's. X. Yeah, there you go. Say, it's in my hands. It's in my hands. Mm -hmm. Now, we have hands, his Hair. Can you make your H softer? Hands. Hands. Mm -hmm. Say his. His. And hair. hair. Uh huh. Make the. Can you. So, um, let me turn my screen.
back on. The screen share works better now. Um, okay, so when you're talking, when you're using H sound, sometimes you want to use like your throat area, like his hair, but just use air. So not just just your breath. His hair, very soft. Try that, Oscar. His hair. His hair. Mm -hmm. Getting better. Say hair. <clears throat> his hair. Uh huh. Yes. Much better. So just be careful that you don't say the H too loudly. Very soft. This is a very, very soft consonant. His hair. Uh, okay. Teacher, <clears throat> excuse me. Is yes. His, his or, or her. Or his. His, his. or hers. Yeah, not his. We want his instead. Hmm. It, his. His. Yeah. His. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. Now in Spanish, it would be his, but... In English, yeah, definitely <laughs> his. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You're not the only one, though. A lot of languages have that. Have You You want to say he's instead of his. Yeah, but definitely the, a short i sound. Your tongue is lower in your mouth when you say that as well. His. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, oh, also, uh, one more time with cloth. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, let's say... Okay, here, this is a contraction. It's short for there is, but you don't have to say there is. You can just say there's. There's. Mm -hmm. Say there's nothing there. There's nothing there. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, and then we have, this is a slang word here. This means stupid person. A nincompoop. Say nincompoops. Nincompoops. Yeah, good. <laughs> Um, <laughs> twist. Twist. Say around the twist. Around the twist. Mm -hmm. If you are around the twist, that means uh, another way to say you're stupid or you you don't mm -hmm. think correctly. You have a problem with your brain. Uh, one more word for you. Glistens. Glistens. Mm -hmm. Glisten, something that glistens is shiny. Um, things that glisten, maybe um, glitter. Some women's dresses might glisten. Um, other things like water. In the if you see the sunlight on like on the ocean, the ocean might glisten from the water. You see the light on the ocean. So the the guy is just saying uh, this, only stupid people cannot see this. It's invisible to stupid people, but I'm sure you can see it because you're very smart. You're the king. Okay, good. Thanks, Oscar. Thanks, teacher. All right. Um, Sara is next. Starting with now right on cue. Now right on cue, exactly then, in burst the dozen brainy men. They shouted, Oh, what lovely stuff. We want some, too. Do you have enough? Extremely calm, the tailor stands with nothing in his empty hands and says, No, no, this gorgeous thing is only for my lord the king. The king, not wanting to admit to being a proper royal twit, cried out, Oh, isn't it divine? I want it all. It's mine. It's mine. I want a skiing outfit most so I can keep as warm as toast. The brainy men all cried, Egad, O oh, majesty, you lucky lad. You'll feel so cozy in the snow with temps at zero and below. Okay, sorry, go ahead. Sarah, are you there? Yoo-hoo! Hello? Hello. Uh, teacher, can you read the first uh, six lines? Because I couldn't hear you well. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, right on cue, exactly then, in burst the dozen brainy men. They shouted, Oh, what lovely stuff. We want some, too. Do you have enough? Extremely calm, the tailor stands with nothing in his empty hands. Okay, go ahead. Uh, now, right on to exa exactly then, embrace the, the dozen brainy men. 
They shouted, oh, what lovely stuff. We want some too. Do you, uh, do you have enough? Extremely calm, the trailer stands with nothing in his empty hands and says, no, no, this gorgeous thing is only for my lord, the king. The king not wanting to admit to being a proper royal tw twit, cried out, oh, isn't uh, divine? I want it all. It's mine. It's mine. I want a skiing outfit must so I can keep as warm as toast. The brainy men all cried, Egad or Egad? Egad. Uh, Egad. Oh, uh, oh, Majesty, you lucky lad, you'll, you'll feel so cozy in the snow with Tim's at zero and below. Okay, good. So, yeah, so this Egad here is just like, oh my gosh, wow, whoa. So something that you say when you're surprised or you, you see something unexpected. Just so that we call that an interjection. Wow, you just it's not really a real word, it's just something that people say when they see something or they have a reaction to something. Okay. Um so for you, most of you, you've got a good control of your vowels and consonants in general, but there are a few things that you can do to sound um, more like a native speaker. Um, for example, um, we have a lot of sentences here that have words like want, um, also words like not, words that end in a T, and especially when you're saying a sentence and you have a word that ends in a T in the middle of the sentence, we make the T really soft. So, for example, we want some too. It doesn't sound like there's a T there at all. Can you try that? We want some too. We want some too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Same thing with um, not. Not wanting. Not wanting. Yeah. But definitely, the, this T here we'll pronounce with an actual T sound. Not wanting. Mm -hmm. Not and wanting. To admit. To admit. Mm -hmm. Say, not wanting to admit. Not wanting to admit. Uh huh, good. Say, twit. Twit. A stupid person, another slang word for someone who is not smart. A twit. Um, also, say for me one more time, isn't it? Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Isn't it divine? Isn't it divine? Mm -hmm. Divine. Divine, uh-huh. One more time, divine. Divine. Good. Isn't it divine? Isn't it divine? Mm -hmm. Careful with your, your vowel sound here. So not divine, but divine. Divine. Yeah, yeah, good. Say one more time. Isn't it divine? Isn't it divine? Mm hmm, good. Outfit. Outfit. Mm hmm. So here, in this, with this T here, uh, it's very soft. Outfit. Again, please. Outfit. Outfit. Yeah. And one more time with our interjection, egad. Egad. Uh-huh, yeah. E and then gad will be your strong one there. Um, oh, and another word that ends in the T, toast. Toast. Yeah, no, another thing to know about this, you see there's a T at the end, but the T will be stronger because there's an S before it. Toast. And most. also, most, also. Most. It's easier, because the, the way that the S is, the, the way that your air is going, the, way, the, way, the shape your mouth is in and your air, it's easier to actually make a good T sound at the end of most and toast. But if you have a word like um, want that ends in an N, that's your, your tongue is doing something different and it's easier just to say we want some too instead of we want some too. It makes it easier to, to make the sentence go faster. OK, 
Okay, so oh. these um, these are these twelve these dozen brainy men were making a meeting, and they they're trying to kill the king. So they're in on the plan. They're also <clears throat> working with the tailor to try to trick the king. So they all pretend. They all act like there is also uh, clothes here. Oh, these these clothes look amazing, but the king does not want to admit that he can't see them because they they told him if you can't see it, you're stupid. So he also says, oh, this fabric is amazing. It looks so great. I want all of it. Make me a skiing outfit with this fabric. And these brainy men, these very smart men who have the plan to kill him, they say, oh, you're so lucky that you have this, these clothes, even though there are no clothes at all. You'll be so cozy in the snow. You'll feel very good when you are skiing in this outfit. Okay, good. Uh, Victor will do the next section. Okay. Next day, the tailor came to fit the costume on the royal twit. The brainy men all went along to see that nothing should go wrong. The tailor said, Strip naked, sire. This suit so warm you won't require. Your underclothes or pant or vest or even hair upon your chest. And now the clever Mr. Ho... Put on the most terrific show of dressing up the naked king in nothing, not a single thing. That's right, sir. Slip your arm in there. And now I'll zip you up right there. Do you feel comfy? Comfy? Does it fit? Or should I take this in a bit? Next day, the tailor came to fit the costume on the royal tweet. The brainy man all went along to see that nothing should go wrong. The tailor said, Strip naked, sire. This suit's so warm you won't require your underclothes or pant or vest or even hair upon your chest. And now the clever Mr. Ho put on the most terrific show of dressing up the naked king in nothing, not a single thing. That's right, sir. Slip your arm in there and now I'll zip you up right there. Do you feel comfy? Does it fit? Or should I take this in a bit? Okay, good. So they they are helping the king fit into these clothes. They're pretending to put clothes on him uh, so that he can ha make sure the clothes are the right size. They will fit him well. They fit on his body. So we've got lots of the short I sound in this one, Victor. So let's say fit. Fit. Twit. Twit. Yeah, a little bit shorter. Um, drop your tongue more and the corners of your mouth, the sides of your mouth will be in. So very, very little movement with your mouth. Fit. Fit. Twit. Twit. Mm -hmm. That's getting better. And um, slip. Slip. Zip. Zip. Fit. Fit. Bit. Bit. Yeah, yeah, good. Much better. Uh, going back up to the beginning. Should. Should. Uh-huh. Should go wrong. Should go wrong. Mm-hmm, good. Oh, another one. Strip. Strip. Yeah. Naked. Naked. Yeah, no clothes. Say strip naked. Strip naked. Uh huh. So that just means take off your clothes. So you have no clothes on at all. Um, let's say underclothes. Underclothes. Mm hmm. And hair. Hair. Mm hmm. Or even hair. Or even hair. Uh huh. Or even hair upon your chest. Or even hair upon your chest. Mm -hmm. So he says, the, the, you do not need to wear anything underneath this suit. No underwear, no boxer shorts. You don't need anything because the suit, the cloth or the, the fabric that makes up this cl these um, clothes, it's so incredibly warm. You don't need layers of clothes. Usually when you go out in the cold, you need to wear like two shirts and a jacket and a coat, like lots of clothes. But here he says, it's so great, you don't need any layers. You don't need, you can just be naked and then put it on. So he still pretends that there are clothes. There are no clothes, but he pretends to put clothes on the king. Um, let's see. 
Let's say, um, Victor, just one more phrase. Slip your arm in there. Slip your arm in there. Uh-huh, good. Say, that's right, sir. Slip your arm in there. That's right, sir. Slip your arm in there. Yes, good, good. Okay, and so he's saying, put your arm in the sleeve. I'll help you zip, the, like a zipper. It's uh, usually in the front part of the pants. You zip up people. And uh, is this comfy? This is another word for comfortable. Does it fit? Should I take this in? Should I make it smaller? So he's pretending to, to uh, put clothes on the king and figure out how big the clothes need to be for him. But the king is totally naked. There are no clothes on him at all. Okay, good. Um, Abdul Aziz will do the next one. Thanks, Victor. Okay. Now during... Now during this absurd charade, and while the king was off his guard, the brainy men, so shrewd and sly, had turned the central heating high. The king, although completely bare, with not a stitch of underwear, began to sweat and mop his brow, and cried, I do believe you now. I feel as though I'm going to roast. This suit will keep me warm as toast. The queen just then came strolling through with ladies of her retinue. They stopped, they gasped, there, there stood the king, as naked as a piece of string, as naked as a poppin jay, with not a fig leaf in the way. Okay, now go, dar go ahead. Huh? Now darkin this as absurd she cheered and will the kind was of his guard, the brainy man, so sh shirred, shirred and sally, sally, silly, uh, had turned the central heading high. The kind, the kind also completely bare, with not a set, set, set Sitch, sitch, of underwear, began to sweep and mop his brow, and cried, "I do believe you now. I feel as so I am going to roast this suit. This suit will keep me warm as toast." The queen just then come. Strolling through with ladies of here, Latin, 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 you. The stop, they gave gas bit, gas bit, there stood their kind, as naked as a basis of strong string. As naked as a bobbin jay, with not a big leaf in the way. Okay, thank you. So, in this part of the story, the they trick the king. So the king is naked with no clothes, but they make the room very hot. They turn up the heat in the room, so he feels very hot. So he thinks he's wearing these clothes. The queen comes in, and they see that the king is naked. And they're very surprised by that. So the king is not so smart. He thinks he has clothes on. <laughs> okay, uh, Abdul Aziz, let's say this word, shrewd. Shrewd. Mm -hmm. It's another word for smart. Very, very intelligent, uh, especially when you trick people. Another word like that is sly. Sly. Say, Shrewd and sly. Shrewd and sly. Mm -hmm, good. Turned. Turned. Mm -hmm. King. King. Mm -hmm. And stitch. 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 Uh -huh. Stitch. Stitch. Not a stitch. Uh, we want stitch instead. Stitch. Say not a stitch. Not a stitch. 
Good, good. Brow. Brow. Mm -hmm. His forehead, the top part of his face. He's very sweaty. He's very hot. So he has to wipe the sweat off his face. Now. Now. And brow. Brow. Now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They rhyme. Same vowel sound. Say, I'm. I'm. Yeah, so it is I am, but we pronounce it I'm. Say, I'm, uh, I'm going to roast. I'm going to roast. Mm -hmm. He feels like he is cooking. He feels like someone is cooking him, like in an oven, to roast. Uh, let's also say this. This. One more time. This. This. This suit. This suit. Good. Came. Came. Strolling. Strolling. Say, came strolling. Came strolling. Good. She she walked through. She so stroll is another word for walk. So she came walking through. She saw. She went into the room. Let's say her. Her. And this word is retinue. Again. Retinue. Red, red, new. Red, new. Yeah. Uh huh. And a retinue is not very common anymore in English because we don't have as many kings and queens. But a retinue is a group of people that help someone like a queen or a king. So just like a group of helpers, a retinue. Um, that's not so common though anymore. But it's good to know. Uh, one more word for you, Abdul Aziz. Gasped. <gasps> Gasped. Guess, uh, guess. Mm -hmm. um, make the make like a T sound at the end. Gasped. Guessed. Yeah. Say they gasped. They guessed. Yes. Much better. They're very surprised and they all go, oh, that's a gasp. <laughs> they they see this naked king in the middle. He thinks he has clothes, but he does not. Uh, a couple, this is an expression, naked as a pop, pop and jay. A pop and jay is a kind of bird. It just means he has no clothes on at all. And a fig leaf, very, very big leaf from a, the fig tree. Um, some, there are some, um, there's some art with um, Adam and Eve from the Bible. They have fig leaves on, on their bodies, so they're not totally naked. So there's... There's he's wearing absolutely nothing. There's no clothes on him at all. And these two lines just say that. Okay, so naked mm -hmm. king, the queen sees him. They're very surprised. Good. Uh, let's go to uh, back to the front to Alexander. Okay. So you get the next section. He shouted, striking up a pose, Behold my marvelous skiing clothes. These clothes will keep me toasty warm in hail or sleet or snow or storm. Some ladies blushed and hid their eyes and uttered little plaintive cries, but some, it seemed, enjoyed the pleasures of looking at the royal treasures. A brazen wench cried, Oh, my hat! Hey, girls, just take a look at that! The queen, who'd seen it all before, made swiftly for the nearest door. The king cried, now I'm off to ski. You ladies want to come with me? They shook their heads, so off he went. A madman off on pleasure bent. Okay. He shouted, striking up a pose. Behold my marvelous skiing clothes. These clothes will keep me toast to warm. In hell, or sleet, or snow, or storm. Some ladies blushed and hid their eyes and uttered little plaintive cries, but some, it seemed, enjoyed the pleasures of looking at the royal treasures. A brazen, a brazen wench cried, oh my head, hey girls, just take a look at that. The queen who'd seen of it all before, made swiftly for the nearest door. The king cried, no, I'm off to ski, you ladies want to come with me. They shook their hands, so off he went, the madman, a madman off on 
pleasure bent. Okay, good. <laughs> so everybody sees the king. He's naked. All of the ladies are looking at the king. <laughs> They're very surprised, and the king says, "Okay, I'm going to go ski. Does anyone want to come?" And they said no. So he left. He went to go ski outside with no clothes on. Okay. Uh, let's say uh, now. Okay, we're talking about how we do T sounds with U.S. pronunciation. Um, another thing that happens with T um, in U.S. pronunciation is we change the T to a D sound if it's in the middle of the word. Sometimes, not all the time, uh, but this is a word like that. So, Alexander, say shouted. Shouted. Yeah. Another word where that happens is little. Little? Little? Yeah, so make your T like a D instead. Little. little. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, especially if you see, not all the time, but if you see two T's in the middle of the word, especially like little, um, uh, I can't think of too many, metal, uh, M-E-T-T-L-E. -E. Um, yeah, words, words that have two T's in the middle often will change it to a D. This is U.S., by the way. Okay. Yes. Um, little shouted, um, but for example, like toasty will keep the T sounds. If you see an S and there's a T after it, then you will say the T with the real hard T sound for that. But middle of the word often we turn it into a D. Let's also say um, the word marvelous. Marvelous. Huh. Good. And say. Hid. Hid. Mm -hmm. Hid their eyes. Hid their eyes. Uh -huh. So they blush, their faces turn red, they don't want to look at the king because he's naked. They hide their eyes. Uh, some, other, like, some of the other girls there also, they tried to look at the king. <laughs> so some of them did not want to look, some of them did want to look at him. <laughs> um, say also... Ah, okay. It all before, make your T really soft here because it's at the end of the word. It all before. Say the it all before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so less, less T on it. It all before. So it, it all before. Mm -hmm. Even and less. Yeah. yeah, even less even less T. It all before. It all before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's better. Okay. Mm -hmm. And let's say madman. Madman. Yeah. A madman off on pleasure bent. A madman off on pleasure bent. Yeah, so he's crazy and he really wants to do something fun. So he, he goes off in the, naked in the snow to go skiing. Nobody wants to go with him, though. They shook their heads. He said no. Okay, good. And Ali will do the next part. Okay, oh, this is the end. Okay, so Ali, uh, let's have you go start with the king cried, now I'm off to ski, and then the end. So I'll just, I'm just going to read the this last section so you guys can hear it. The crazy king put on his skis, and now oblivious to the freeze, he shot outdoors and skis away, still naked as a popinjay. And thus this fool so lewd and squalid in half an hour was frozen solid and all the nation cried, hey-ho, the king's deep frozen in the snow. Okay. Also, no apostrophe here. Typo. Okay, go ahead. The king cried, no, I'm off the ski. You ladies want to come with me. They shook they, their heads, so off he went. A madman off on pleasure band. The crazy king put on his skis and now oblivious to the freeze. He shot outdoors and skis away, still naked as a popinjay. And thus this fool so loud and schooled in half an hour was frozen sol solid. And all the nation cried, hey, who, the king's deep frozen in the snow. <laughs> Good. So they, their plan worked. They killed the king by tricking him into skiing naked. 
and then he froze in the snow because he had no clothes on. Okay, uh, just a few words for you, Ali. Say now. No. And um, also say, where'd it go? Um, there. There. Their heads. Their heads. They shook their heads. They shook their heads. Yes, good. Your R at the end of the word is getting better. Their heads. Mm -hmm. Pleasure. Pleasure. Ah, uh -huh, good. Now, combine these two words. His skis. His skis. Yeah, putting them together, the two S sounds in there. Good. And naked. Naked. Yeah, no clothes, naked. So the first syllable will be strong there. Naked. Naked. Yep, yep. Still naked as a popinjay. Still naked as a popinjay. Huh? Another word? Lewd. Lewd. That means uh, not polite, rude, saying bad things. Um, another one? Squalid. Squalid. Yeah, if you're squalid, if... Uh, if you are squalid, that means you don't take care of yourself. So he has no clothes and he's he's um, lacking something he needs. He's squalid. Say lewd and squalid. Lewd and squalid. Uh huh. Good. And frozen. Frozen. Yeah. Ooh, frozen. Frozen. Yeah. Good. The king's deep frozen. The king's deep deep frozen. Uh huh. Good. Yep, your R's are getting better, much better. All right, good. So the that's how they king they kill the king because he's he's frozen in the snow with no clothes on. They trick him into skiing naked. Okay. Oh, we had um we had our guy from Italy and he left. We would have had time to read with him. Um, that's too bad. Maybe I hope he comes back. Um, does anyone have any questions about? The poem or any words that you saw in there where you were like, what is that word? We have a couple minutes. Everything is right. <laughs> okay. If you're interested in looking at the original poem, it's called The Emperor's New Clothes. Uh, it's not a poem originally. It's just a story. But um, it's the same idea where they trick the king into going naked. He, the king thinks that he's wearing clothes, yeah, but he's uh, not. Uh, I... Uh, something like a story uh, before. Uh, I think a child cried, uh, There is a king naked. Yeah, why is uh, the king naked? Yeah. yeah uh -huh. In the public, uh, everyone uh, afraid of to say <laughs> that, but a child uh, suddenly says, The king is naked. <laughs> Naked, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what. I, yeah, and then I think it's the same. The same trick where they they say, if you can't see this, you're stupid. <laughs> so, <laughs> but nobody, you know, it's one of those things where you don't want to admit that that you might be stupid. So, <laughs> it's funny. So you, some people do a lot of uh, stupid things so that people don't think they're stupid. Sometimes. <laughs> Okay, guys, um, my video is really strange. It's really, my mouth is moving much slower than it actually is, and then it goes, it speeds up. It's really <laughs> weird. But my, I think my sound quality is still okay, so that's really weird. No, no. Uh, I don't teacher? know. That's okay. All, teacher? All okay. Can you write the name of this story, please? Uh -huh. It's in the, the Verbling chat, but I'll put it in the Google chat, too. Um, the Emperor's New Clothes. That's also the title of this poem, too. Okay. But... You can look for the original story. Not a poem, but a story of it. Yeah. Good good reading practice, too. Now you know the, the idea of what happens. <coughs> the king does not ski in the original one, though. I don't think they had skiing back then. <laughs> okay, I'll let you guys go to the next class. Um, this is my last class for today, but I have four classes tomorrow, so you can check my teacher page for that. Um, you can you. follow me on Facebook, too. Um, I'll start updating my Facebook more as well um, with my classes. I haven't done that in a few days, so I'll do that. Um, and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye. Thank you, Thank you teacher. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. See you.